I've been saving this conversation for today. And I want to start with Simone Biles. Uh, as, we, as we all know, Simone Biles is an icon. She is one of the greatest athletes of all time. She is the GOAT in her field. I heard uh, Dominique Dawes, who was the GOAT in her field uh, um, um, back, in, back in the 90s, saying how proud she was of Simone Biles. For those that don't know, Simone Biles left the competition for her wellness, for her mental health. She said she wasn't feeling well. She didn't want to injure herself. She made that, that decision. And there has been a wild onslaught of attacks on this 24-year-old woman who is not only respected because of her gift and talent as an athlete, she also spoke out against sexual assault in gymnastics, that disgusting coach. I don't even want to say his name. But she has been just attacked because she decided that now was not the right time. She's already, is it a five-time gold medalist? She's already made history. She already is phenomenal. So I don't mean to torture y'all, but I just want y'all to understand a bit of what's being said. Then, Reese and David, I want y'all to sound off. I apologize in advance for playing Charlie Kirk, but I just want you to get the vitriol of what comes her way. And... It ties in to Shakari Richardson. It ties in to Meghan Markle. It ties in to Vice President Kamala Harris. So just listen to what this man, who has no athletic talent whatsoever, had the audacity to say about the great Simone Biles. Short clip. You're representing your nation, you selfish, you're selfish sociopath. Are you kidding me? Today, it's like, you know what? I'm not going to do something stupid and get hurt. It's just not worth it, especially when you have, like, three amazing athletes that can step up to the plate and do it. So you know who has the gold medal? Russia. Russia. I have to go look at these four foot eleven Russian Olympi- Olympians chewing on their gold medals, smirking at the Americans. I'm not okay with that. But honestly, that's where we're headed. We are raising a generation of weak people like Simone Biles. Again, if you want to be, if she got all these mental health problems, don't show up. She's an incredible athlete. Of course she's an incredible athlete. I'm not saying, I just said she's probably the greatest gymnast of all time. She's also very selfish. She's immature. And she is a shame to the country. She's totally a sociopath. Of course she's a sociopath. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. And then trash box Pierce Morgan made some ridiculous comments, not even worth repeating. Uh, It's really interesting. Reese Colbert did a phenomenal (laughs) viral video (laughs) on this. And I love being on radio Reese because we have time to even go further, further in. Yes. But I just would, you know, listen, let's be honest, Reese. You've been outspoken about the ways in which black women are attacked for years Mm -hmm. at this point, Mm -hmm. whether it's politics, whether it's sports, whether it's mute music, the way I see, what's this guy's name? Tori Lorenz, Tor Lorenz. Oh yeah. Tori Lane. Yeah. Who allegedly shot Megan. And I'm saying allegedly just to be safe. Yeah. uh, Megan the stallion in the foot yet. He's upset about little Nas. I mean, my gosh, but when you see this toward Simone Biles, who was an American icon Mm -hmm. and you hear comments like Charlie Kirk, your thoughts. First of all, fuck all of them. (laughs) I made a video dragging the hell out of Pierce Morgan, but it applies to all of them, to be honest. My thought is, it's time to get disrespectful. It didn't sit right to me that people were, I, I feel like when these crazy ass racists come at Black people, they try to put the onus on us to be civil, to be respectful, to try to reason with them. And you cannot reason with racists. You cannot reason with white supremacists. The only thing that you can do is treat them with the scorn and contempt that they are worthy of. And so I wanted to make it clear to them that there is at least one black girl who's willing to put her face in her mouth in front of telling y'all to fuck off and that y'all ain't shit and that we're not going to take it. 
and that we don't have respect for you. This is not about being peaceful. This is not about extending an olive branch. It's about violating you the same way that you violate us and you try to bully us and you think you're going to get away with it. And so I had to make that perfectly clear to Pierce Morgan and he got the message and 789,000 people got the fucking message that I'm not playing with them. And I dragged at least a thousand white folks in my comments yesterday. The Brits did not send their best, but they did come after me. <laughs> and they call me every kind of monkey. Somebody call me Obama mm. Nequa and Shanae. Shanae is lit. And they had every little racist in. So I thought that I don't think that the British racists are as creative as the American racists. So some of their stuff didn't really land the way they thought, they thought it was. But I dragged their asses all day, every day. It was some of my best work on Twitter. If you go to my tweets and replies, I did some of my best work yesterday, but I made it clear to them that this is not about uh, 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 trying to get your approval. It's not about trying to appeal to your sensibility because you don't have any. It's not about trying to prove to your humanity because you don't have any of that. We don't give a fuck about your opinion, period. And you need to shut the hell up and leave black people alone. And so that's what I aim to do. I wish that more of us, we can't lay hands on people over Twitter, but we sure. can be disrespectful. And I was very <laughs> deliberate about that. And they were very upset about it. They were more triggered by the fact that they couldn't come to me and tell me, black girl, how dare you talk to this white man like that? And I was supposed to be like, okay, master, I'm sorry. I'm going to delete my video. I don't care. I don't, I don't answer to you. I don't answer to white people. I don't answer to Piers Morgan. I don't answer to racists. And as a matter of fact, the same contempt y'all have for us, somebody said, I hate blacks. Okay, well, we don't like you either. So what's your point? You think it's a revelation to me that you're a racist who doesn't like black people? That's our experience. That's been our experience since the beginning of time. It's not a revelation. So um, I, my whole thing is they're going to continue to do what they're going to do. But at the minimum, what I can do, what's in my wheelhouse, and I could be classy too. I could be classy. I could be bougie. I could be ratchet because I was at the vineyard popping ace of space. So I have range, okay? <laughs> but yesterday, I was, I was vulgar. Okay, I was ratchet. If you want to call it ghetto, that's fine. I was all of those things, but I was those things because that's what the moment needed for these people because I'm sick of them being treated like reasonable people and I'm sick of them being treated like we owe some deference to them when all we owe them is disrespect. That should be the title of your book, I Can Be Disrespectful by Reese Colbert. <laughs> that's the that's title of the book. That's not bad. I Can Be Disrespectful. I can be, I, very. I, I've, I, I like... That's a that's a good title. Just Reese Colbert rants. I'm 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 here for it. Yeah, uh, David. You know if um, I don't know if Carrie Strug or who was the other iconic gymnast? What's her name? Shannon Miller. Uh, if if they had to take a remember Carrie Strug's in '96, she she did that vault thing and almost like broke her foot in half. Yeah. First of all, she shouldn't have done that. Right. She shouldn't have done that. She was severely, severely injured. And reportedly, uh, when Carrie Struggs does that in 1996 at the Atlanta Olympics, they didn't even need the point that she got. If I have that right, I could be wrong. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if Carrie Struggs or Shanna Miller or what was that woman's name? She was a Russian uh, gymnast, Nadia, the famous Nadia one. Who got the first... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that could be. Yeah, yeah. But nonetheless. If they had to take if they had to take a step back because they weren't feeling well, they they weren't feeling well for their mental health. Uh, I do not think it would be this kind of reaction. No, and I also think people are reacting this way because Naomi Osaka did it, you know, a few months ago. Right. So yeah. now they're I guess now they're even angrier. <laughs> and then there's this weird nationalism around right. the Olympics that I don't really. What does Issa Rae say? I know folks are going to get mad that I'm saying this. I'm rooting for everybody black. Period. So sometimes I'm rooting for the, for the Jamaican team. Sometimes I am. I just might be mm -hmm. in that kind of mood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm rooting for the Haitian team. If they manage to get to the Olympics, if you look at my interview with uh, Aaliyah Shipman. Yeah. But yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts on this, this uh, critique of her from a, from a Americana perspective? Sure. Okay. I have a long list of thoughts. I'm going to try and rapid fire them off Sears <laughs> since I didn't have a Twitter uh, viral <laughs> post like we see yesterday. First and foremost, uh, America needs Reese Colbert. We need Reese <laughs> Colbert. And here's why, here's why, here's why. Your listeners know Reese and I don't always agree. I'm going to disagree with her a little bit in this case, but Reese speaks out without apology for Black people, for Black women, and 
when the vitriol comes in, she catches it, throws it back and lets people hold it. And like she just said, sometimes that's what you have to do. So I, I'm glad we have Reese in that role doing what she does like no one else can do it. Thank you. Having said that. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Hold no, on. Listen, no, 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 no. Charlie Hold Kirk. On, like, mm -hmm. Char Charlie Kirk is, is ridiculous. That clip you oh, yeah. played shows, you know, it, I mean, it was trash. Okay. Yeah. And it, he, he would never admit to it, but it betrays that he wants to take the first opportunity he can to sound off on a black woman. It's weird that he was so perturbed by the Russian team winning the gold. He's a, he's a Trump ally. I yeah. thought the whole Trump thing was, oh, Russia's not so bad after all. Right, okay? right. Mm -hmm. he, he, he also, um, it's one thing to say, oh, you know, I was disappointed or I disagree with the decision, but but calling someone, what, what were the words he used? He, he, he in Selfish, or, psychopath. psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I mean, yeah. I mean that, not only is that illogical, but it's, it's that is, to Reese's point, disrespectful. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And let's remind people, you just did a minute ago, Clay, that even if, even if someone wanted to question Simone Biles' decision, you can't say she doesn't have the mental toughness to win because she's already, she already won. won. Mm -hmm. Last yeah. time around, she either had four or five gold medals. Mm -hmm. So if you could say this wasn't her year, okay. But you can't say she doesn't have the heart and mind of a champion because she's already a, an Olympic champion many times over. Mm -hmm. I, the only place I'm, I'm going to go slightly different than Reese is that I didn't think Piers Morgan's column was disrespectful. I thought it was wrong. I did not agree with him. Piers Morgan has a has a shoddy track record on racial issues. I shoddy? Thought the, I thought the column was, again, I want to be clear with listeners. I didn't agree with him, but I thought he was making a point from his point of view. And maybe this is the, you know, column editor in me. And I was like, Look, he, he, if he wants to lay it out here this way, I didn't see any insults in there. I just saw okay, it. Okay, hold on one second, wrong. David. Let okay. me let me read the tweet that okay. really went viral. Okay. This is what Pierce Morgan Talking wrote. Talking about his column. I didn't see his tweets. Oh, well, but the, the tweet is where it all started. Okay. The tweet okay. is where it all started. Okay. So July 27th at 1024 a.m., okay. uh, just hours after, the, after uh, it's, you know, Simone Biles is not going to uh, participate, she, he writes this. Are mental health issues that right there that's in mm. quotes to me that that's disrespectful that's mocking now the go to excuse for any poor performance in elite sport what a joke just admit you did badly made mistakes and will strive to do better next time kids need strong role models not this nonsense okay Again, I haven't looked at all his tweets. I heard that when you just read. I read the column. I don't agree with him. His analysis is wrong. He's he's not an expert in this area. And I think we all know Piers Morgan well enough to know that he's trying to get a rise out of people. So I'm not defending him on any of those levels. I didn't hear an insult in there. I don't think that's in the category of what Charlie Kirk said. But let, let, me, let me add this, though, Clay. I encourage all Clay Nation listeners to read the column by Washington Post sports columnist Sally Jenkins today, which I think is the perfect corrective to Piers Morgan. It's in my Twitter feed if people want to pull it up. And she explained what's been going on behind the scenes and how little support she's gotten from USA Gymnastics over the years and how this isn't just a one-off moment that she's been under a lot of negative pressure for years and, and people shouldn't be surprised that she made a decision in her own self-interest for her own mental well-being and her own physical well-being. Read the Sally Jenkins column in the, in the Washington Post. She's a great sports columnist. Lastly, I know your listeners have already covered this thoroughly. What the Piers Morgans of the world are not picking up on is that Yes, it's a mental health issue. No mental health isn't in quotes, to your point, Clay, but also that 
As Simone Biles said, you, if your mental isn't 110, 120%, you can physically hurt yourself spinning in the air, 20, 30 feet up in the air, rotating at the speed that almost no other human being can do. You lose concentration for a split second and you can seriously injure yourself. Also in my Twitter feed, I'm gonna point people to the clip that Dominique Mochianu, long mm -hmm. time ago, uh, gymnast posted, where she shows in slow motion how she hit her head on the balance beam and the G USA Gymnastics didn't immediately get her to get a, a scan for her mm -hmm. neck. And she was 14 years old. Final point, and I'm gonna flip it back to you guys. Um, Pete, to your point, Clay, I, I think it's fine for people to want Americans to win. I root for the Americans. If it's a tiebreaker between two players that I don't know nothing about, I just default root for the American. But people have to stop assuming that, that these athletes owe them something other than doing their best. And if your best is, this isn't my year, then people have to, people have to get up. The Charlie Kirks of the world have to get the fuck over it, number one. I'm going to just throw one yes. little F in there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and lastly, let's... Can people look on the bright side of stuff for a change? The team got together and did an interview where they said, we didn't just get silver, we won mm -hmm. silver. And, mm -hmm. and Simone Biles was part of that. And lastly, the woman who, for the United States who won the all around individual in gymnastics was, I wanna make sure I get her name right, Sunisa Lee. Mm -hmm. She killed it. Among American, a tiny Asian American minority group. That's a good thing. Let's focus on the positive, people. It's sports. Focus on the positive and stop using Black women as targets just because things didn't go exactly the way you wanted to as a fanboy. That's all. Okay, I I I, I got to say this though. I got to say this, then I'll let I'll let Reese take it. Lord knows, I know she she'll, she'll take this from me. I mean. Not take it from you, but just pat, yeah. you know, relay it. Respectfully, David Swordley. <laughs> In the name of Dominique Dawes, when she became the first black gymnast to win a gold, and she has talked about being called the N-word incessantly. Yes. And she has talked about the kind of endless racism that she experienced. And she has talked about how in 1996, she was not getting the same kind of press as the, as the other women in her team. Correct. In the name of Gabby Douglas, mm. who was called a monkey, who was called a slave, who was treated terribly, who probably had mental health issues as well, the way she was experiencing consistent racism, right? And didn't talk about it until after she retired from being a part of gymnastics because she didn't want to, she wanted to protect her team, which she's a child, she's a, a teenager. And then we have Simone Biles, the greatest of all time, and Dominique Dawes and, and, and Gabby Douglas, and forgive me if I'm not mentioning other uh, black women in gymnastics. No. In, in, the, in the name of those women, and Simone Biles takes a step back, already being a five-time, uh, already being an, an Olympian, the idea that Pierce Morgan we're a country, we claim we care about nationalism. The idea that Pierce Morgan, who isn't an American, even took a second to write one word about her in the Daily Mail is disrespectful. He called her selfish. He called her a quitter. To me, there were plenty of insults there. So for me, it may, have, it, you know, Char it, it may not be Charlie Kirk, but it's still trifling and wrong and soulless and just downright cruel. Mind you, I'm sure Ms. Biles, she's getting love from Janet Jackson and Michelle Obama. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure she saw, she saw Reese Colbert's video or somebody passed it on to her, said, hey girl, look at this. But this is, and then in this article, in this article, I'm not gonna read any quotes from it. In this article, David, he mentions Naomi Osaka. He mentions Meghan Markle. So he may not have called her the B word or the N word or, or said something heinous and called her a sociopath. Nonetheless, he took the time to write about this 24-year-old Black girl who was an icon in her field, who has survived sexual assault, and it's very public, mind you, mm -hmm. who wants their, their sexual assault this public. Every bit, every syllable, every punctuation to me is downright trifling and disrespectful. And I'll say this, 
Charlie Kirk, his actual words were disgusting and vile and all that kind of stuff. But Pierce Morgan either co-owns or owns a website called the Daily Mail. He took the time to write an op-ed. So as a writer myself, I'm actually even more offended. This is about 900 words of you babbling. So every bit of it, I just think it's stone cold wrong. And respectfully, I just think it's a disservice to not say exactly what this is in the name of what so many black women in gym, gymnastics, maybe nameless, faceless women who didn't get the access for whatever reason, who didn't make the final cut. Uh, I think Pierce Morgan is disgusting and wrong. And the delivery may not be as bad as Charlie Kirk, but he's been much more, he's much more, he's much more well-known than a Charlie mm -hmm. Kirk. Uh, he has more power. If you own a major publication and he has a long history, I say you're just as trifling and you're just as wrong. And I just think it's completely vile right. and, and insidious. And then one more thing. Yeah. Then let's go another step further. You know, uh, then not that Reese cares, but ga I, I saw those comments, Reese, gathering up his base mm -hmm. to attack Reese, gathering up his people to go off and attack her. Right. He knows what he's doing. I'll never forget when he was trifling to Janet Mock. So for me, it's a long history. My spirit ain't with it. Get back <laughs> Satan. Right. And I just think he is deplorable and the bottom of the barrel. And maybe he should mind his business. He's not an athlete. He's not an American. It's just really disgusting to me. So I think it was just as bad for different sure. reasons. Let me, let me, I know you want to kick it to Reese. Let me just say one okay. thing in response Please. to that, which, which, which is that um, I, I, I take everything you're saying. I don't disagree with it. I, 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 I mostly, uh, you know, agree with you and Reese on this. W what I think, and again, maybe this is me as a newspaper editor who publishes columns and analysis all the time. I, I think what was proven was that, and I'm not a Piers Morgan fan, but what was proven was he was wrong and that he didn't know what he was talking about and he was out of his depth. And if you read that Sally Jenkins column, you'll see just how far out of his depth he was. But I think he made it, I, I, I'm only defending his style and saying he made his position clear. He took a hard position and, I, and, I, and he laid out his reasons why, even if I can look at it and say his reasons why just don't hold up and they're just wrong. Uh, I have one more thing I want to say about Black women in the Olympics, but I want to let Reese just jump in there as well. Go on, Reese, take it. Well, you know, I, I think the issue that I have is that Black women, Black people are up against white supremacist institutions. And what Piers Morgan has is institutional power. Charlie Kirk is a dumbass white man who's a racist on whatever the fuck he's talking shit on or whatever. But Piers Morgan has institutional power through something like the Daily Mail. And you yes. understand that uh, yes. being an editor for the Washington Post. And so these institutions have the power and they are successful at crafting anti-black, anti-black woman, anti-black, dehumanizing black people. And so what they're doing is they're perpetuating white supremacy with that. And that's what I have a problem with. It doesn't matter how mild the language is. It doesn't matter if they can reason this or that or whatever. It's that they're using their institutional power to consistently go after black women. This is a pattern with Piers Morgan. And to Clay's point, when you look at the way the black woman gymnasts have been treated, look at Gabby Douglas. Gabby Douglas is proof that win or lose, there's no grace for a black woman because Gabby Douglas was on the gold winning team. And they went after her because she didn't have her hand placed in the right area. They said she wasn't smiling enough. They said she wasn't cheering enough. The smiling. They won. And they were still not happy. And even some black people, I have to admit that, some black people went after her for her hair, but black people don't they have did. institutional power like the Daily Mail does and like all these right. other people do to try to paint her as unpatriotic. So even if Simone had gone out there and she, if let's say she performed her best and they won gold, great. That's the best case scenario. If they went out there and lost, it would have been, well, why didn't you drop out? If you knew that you had the twisties, then you were irresponsible. You were selfish for still trying to compete. You brought the team down. Simone Biles doesn't have it anymore. Is she really the GOAT? Blah, 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 blah. They would have been on her ass if she had continued to go for it and they lost. So I thought that that was the responsible thing is to say, look, they have, we have uh, three of the other top gymnasts in the world 
right now, as proven by the fact they took second place, they can handle this and I'm not going to be a distraction. Unfortunately for them, th she was still a distraction, but now SUNY, she has her gold medal. And so she gets to kind of reclaim the narrative and get her shine and that's awesome. But black women aren't given the grace to win. Black women aren't given the grace to lose. Black women aren't given the grace to take a step back. They And, and, and the thing about it is people want us to perform our trauma for them. If she had gone out there and she was upset, why are you upset? You're not supportive of your other teammates. You just want the hog smile. Like what they did right. to Gabby Douglas. If she would have been out there crying, oh, she's too weak. She's weak for crying. If she would have been out there, whatever, they would have found a way to demonize her because black women are not extended grace in this world. And so that's why for me, where you don't extend grace to black women, I don't extend grace to you. I'm going to violate you the right. same way, and if not worse, than how you violate Black women because somebody's got to say it's not okay, and somebody has to make them feel uncomfortable in that moment with the, the power that they feel to constantly violate Black women. Somebody has to say, you're not going to feel comfortable with what you just did, period. Right, no, and I think the way you frame that makes... It's, it's, it's one of the best ways I've ever heard anyone frame that, Reese, when you said Black women are not extended grace. That is absolutely true. It's true in sports. It's true in other spheres. And that's why, again, I applaud you for pushing back on Piers Morgan. I'm just, just for, you know, for the sake of discussion, I'm saying I thought he had a point of view. I don't agree with it. And he laid it out in a way that he didn't hide the ball on his point of view. He said, this is what I'm thinking. This is how I'm thinking of it. And you and you cracked back on him as just in the same way that he has the platform to do what he did. You you used your platform to do what you did. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to keep dwelling on peers in the column. I will, I will just note that, um, you know, the Daily Mail is a tabloid, right? It's not a, it's it not is. a, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a, a prestige publication. They have a lot of readers, uh, and and that's what they do. They provoke, and they and, you know, and it's incumbent on other writers and other voices and other editors, people like me, to present other voices. I'm not. I, I don't want people to think that I'm like being defensive. In 2016, I published a piece by Joy Ann Reed in the Washington Post, defend pushing back on the critics of the black women at the 2016 Rio mm -hmm. Olympics. Yeah. In 2015, I published a piece by uh, by uh, 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 Julianne Malveaux defending, uh, pushing back on the critics of Serena Williams. In 20, either 2017 or 2018, I was very fortunate to edit a piece by Billie Jean King sticking up for Serena Williams when she had that awkward moment on the court when Naomi Osaka was first coming on the scene. That's my job as an editor. Some other job, some other editor is out there of like, yeah, let's get Piers Morgan in there, you know, to throw some salt, okay? And mm -hmm. and and I know I'm not a neutral observer. I'm I'm sort of sticking up for the opinionator industry, <laughs> but that that is how it goes. And people have to come with their best a game when they write and come out with opinions. And you do that every time. Clay does that every time. And uh, you know, I hope I do that all the time. Maybe, you do. Uh, we're, do we're gonna head to we're gonna head to a break, uh, and we'll take calls eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. And I want to say this: I know he mentioned it in the in the horrible piece that he wrote, but nonetheless, Pierce Morgan, you're the one who walked off the job because a black man confronted you with the way that you were treating Meghan Markle. You walked off. You bounced. You couldn't take it because you were having a temper tantrum. What is it called? Good morning, Britain. You, yeah. you, how, and I don't care if he called, he, he called himself out in that piece. You walked off, you aren't an athlete and you could even take a discussion with, with, a, with, a, with a black man who was being totally calm with you and said, listen, whatever personal issue you have with Meghan Markle, that's your issue. And you had to storm off the job. Then, then your sister, Sharon Osborne had a neurological breakdown too and she stormed off. So I don't know what's going on with y'all across the pond. I don't know what it is, your, your friends, your team, whatever, but y'all, y'all are, those two are the personification of, of quitters. And you're calling out Simone Biles, who is a who is a who is a legend at this point. She is a winner, and she decided to take a break break because she didn't want to hurt herself. The irony of that is so funny. You walked off the damn job in the middle of filming. That is unprofessional. That is rude. That is television, uh, the, the a cardinal sin in television. 
You walked off. <laughs>